So good evening everyone. Today we will start with the new topic surface plasmon resonance. Okay. So <clears throat> as the name suggests that this kind of uh, activity it ha happens on a typical surface. Okay. Plasmon means free electrons. Okay. And resonance we all know when they start uh, vibrating at a particular uh, frequency in that way they either absorb or they release some energy at a specific um, wavelength or at a specific uh, angle okay so from here it means the surface plasmon resonance means there will be a surface in our case it is basically a metallic surface and <coughs> on that metallic surface there will be free electrons and when these free electrons are being excited by visible or the IR lights, they absorb that energy and they uh, uh, and they start to resonate. Okay, so in a typical surface plasmon resonance setup, you will find that there is a prism beneath and then you are having a layer of metal over it okay so in our case it is basically a thin layer of gold okay and then as i told you there will be a source of light <laughs> which will be made incident onto this gold layer okay and on the other hand we will be having an array of detector which will be capturing the reflected light at different angles okay now when we are incidating this um, gold plate through this prism so what happens is that is that at a particular angle which is which are being reflected there is a marked absorption suppose at this uh, black dot line there is a marked absorption of the light okay as compared to the other angles okay so theta okay so what is happening now another important thing what i told is the surface phenomenon it is happening over here so what is happening so at the top level of this gold layer there are free electrons so what is happening at this particular angle when you detect is at this particular angle then at that angle the electrons at this layer they start to vibrate okay and this initiation or absorption of the energy from the electromagnetic radiation it is called the resonance effect and it moves across the surface of the gold layer or the metallic layer okay and another important thing uh, over here is that when you are st uh, striking this gold plate with an electromagnetic radiation either the visible light or the IR light radiation what happens the excitation is very localized the excitation is a localized however after the excitation has happened the electromagnetic radiation uh, that means the electrical waves uh, which are being generated they move across the gold surface okay now the thing is that we have discussed that we have this kind of arrangement where we have a prism this uh, hemispherical stuff it is basically a prism 
this is denoting a prism okay now over this gold layer we can attach some carboxylated uh, carboxylated dextran molecules okay carboxylated dextran molecules so in some cases you will find carboxymethylated dextran molecules the main funda is that you are attaching a dextran which is basically a polysaccharide over the glass surface okay now over, after these hydrophilic systems are made then over that we can add either antigen or antibody or any other ligand or receptor components which are basically the biological components okay so i will draw the receptors over it for the sake of understanding right now if you see in this kind of attachment there are two sides the first is a biological side and the second part it is totally a physical entity or which is related to physics so the surface plasmon Uh, plasma resonance uh, resonance the system it is an unique system where biology meets physics okay so there is a unique handshake between the biological system and the physics and this combined systems they allow you to understand antigen antibody reactions they can allow you to understand any other ligand receptor interactions they can allow you to understand the specificity of a specific antigen to a specific antibody no antibody or vice versa and so on so it opens up a plethora of analysis and that too without using any label so no labels are required so and also all the analysis what we do they are basically real time analysis if you consider whatever the analytical tools we have studied till now over there we needed sample preparation however over here you just need to take your sample and uh, uh, you can you may have to do very minimal sample processing and then it is being injected into this Uh, the surface plasma resonance uh, sensor chip system and you get the results on a real time basis whereas in the other cases you had to do a lot of other sample processing uh, steps you had to uh, you had to implement before you can analyze the system and even the data what you would have got you needed to understand it you needed to have some technical knowledge about what you are getting from there and from there uh, then uh, you will be able to understand what is going on with your sample however in this case as i said you you just have a source and the reflected light it is being detected using an array of the detector say for example cmos camera are you getting my point so what would be a typical um, output from this system the typical output of this system would be intensity and theta theta means the angle so this angle and in the case of 
this um, on the detector side this theta it changes with time uh, no, not with time sorry it uh, changes uh, so we measure uh, the intensity of the reflected light at a varying theta angles okay so what happens is that when you are having a particular system it is having a say uh, say you have um, if you take this example over here in this case you have attached one receptor over the sensor chip system and it is having a refractive index now what we will be getting is that we will be getting a straight line which is passing through the system and there will be no absorption okay however if there are certain um, ligands if we put in and this ligand comes and they interact with the system what will happen over here then in that case <clears throat> at a particular angle initially you will be having a baseline so this is the 100% reflectance okay however at a particular theta you will be getting a dip and this dip it is called spr response okay now this spr response it is at this position say theta one position it is there however if the number of this ligands it increases in that case there is a change in the refractive index of this biological layer change in ri of this biological layer and in that case what happens this theta one it may shift to a higher theta say theta two so in that way we will be able to understand what is what type of reaction whether associative reaction is going on or not whether there is a dissociative reaction which is going on or not we can detect all of this okay so let us look into uh, divulge uh, into the um, uh, uh, remaining part of the uh, lecture and let's see uh, let's move forward basically and see uh, what uh, this technology it offers us okay so as i told you surface plasma resonance what is that it is nothing but it is the resonant oscillation of conduction electrons at the interface between negative and positive permittivity material when they are stimulated by an incident light okay so the conduction electrons they start to resonate okay the surface plasma polarotrons which are associated with the spr these are basically the electromagnetic waves that travels along a metal dielectric or metal interface practically in the infrared or visible frequency okay so you must have remember i told you that the electromagnetic waves which are being generated they move along the surface of the gold metal or the gold layer okay so those electromagnetic waves they are regarded as the surface plasma polarotrons or spps the term spps explain the wave involves both charge motion in the metal surface plasma and em waves in air or dielectric okay so both there is a movement of the charge and the electromagnetic waves which is quite understandable okay the spps the surface plasma polarotrons they are shorter in wavelength than the incident polarized 
lights which are the photons okay so when there is a sh shorter wavelength that means there is an increase in the energy okay so why this is so this is because spps can have tighter spatial confinement and higher local field intensity that's what i told you few moments back over here that these signals which are being generated they are highly localized okay and since they are highly localized they have a higher local field intensity at the point where the light is being made incident okay <clears throat> so an spp it will propagate along the interface until its energy is lost either to absorption in the metal or scattering into other directions okay then spps can be excited by both electrons and photons however for biological analysis purposes the photons they are being usually used okay when the surface plasma wave it interacts with the local particle or irregularity such as the rough surface part of the energy can be re emitted as light this emitted light can be detected behind the metal film from various directions and this is what we call it as or we are regarding as the reflected light okay so it is basically not the reflection in technical terms uh, because as the name suggests that a part of the energy because it is being absorbed and a part of the energy it is being re emitted in the form of light and that re emission we are capturing however if you look into the arrangement it would seem that we are basically capturing the reflected light okay <clears throat> now the spr it can be uh, spr system it can be made into two configurations one is krishman configuration and the second is auto configuration in our case we are mainly interested in the krishman uh, configuration okay so if you see there is a metal and we have already told that this metal is the uh, gold metal okay au and then we have a glass prism which is having uh, epsilon not permittivity then there is an incident beam light and then incident beam light it interacts with the metal and from there it is being reflected uh, and that reflected beam it is being uh, captured okay now in the other case if you see between the prism and the metal there is a dielectric most usually it is air it may be liquid also okay however in both the cases if you see the movement of the surface plasmon it is along the surface of the metal so see in both the cases the surface plasmon it propagates along the metal dielectric interface okay <clears throat> in the first case if you see the uh, in the metal and the dielectric this dielectric it is basically a liquid system okay because what happens is that as i told you you will be having some polysaccharide which have been immobilized onto the mobile surface or onto the metal surface sorry so after the polysaccharide they are being immobilized over there we will be having some biological molecules which will be attached onto that and this then we will be having some biological analytes which will be passed over this surface okay through a liquid okay so that means these analytes they are suspended in a liquid system usually they are a kind of buffer okay 
So the analytes in the buffer, they are being passed through micro channels. over this biological system and these analytes they may or may not interact if they are interacting then there will be a change in the SPR response okay and if they are not interacting then as I told you we will be getting a line which is equivalent to 100 percent um, intensity of the light okay and it will be a straight line basically this green line when uh, as I told you this green line it depicts when there are no interactions. Okay. And once the interaction has happened the position of this theta value it changes depending upon the mass of analyte. absorbed because it changes the refractive index of this biological system. <coughs> then SPPs it can only exist at the interface between a positive permittivity material and a negative permittivity material. The positive permittivity material often called the dielectric material can be any transparent material such as air or for visible light glass. Okay. The negative permittivity material often called as the plasmonic material may be a metal or other material. In our case as I told you it is basically a metal and that to gold. Now this SPR reflectivity measurements they have been used to detect molecular adsorptions such as adsorption of the polymers, adsorption of the DNA, adsorption of the proteins and similarly you can also go for the adsorption of the antigen or antibody or you can go for enzyme kinetics. And so on. So the opportunities of analysis using the SPR technology it is limitless. But you have to keep in mind that whatever type of measurement you want to do there has to be an associative or dissociative interactions. Okay. Now when this associative and dissociative interactions happen as I told you there is a change in the refractive index corresponding refractive index and that is being basically detected by this SPR technology. <coughs> Technically it is a common it is common to measure the angle of minimum reflection angle of a uh, angle of maximum absorption. This angle changes in the order of 0.1 degree during thin about nanometer thickness film adsorption. Okay. The mechanism of detection it is based on the adsorbing molecules cause changes in the local index of refraction. Okay. Changing the resonance conditions of the surface plasmon waves. If the surface is patterned with different biopolymers using adequate optics and imaging sensors that is a camera, the technique can be extended to surface plasmon resonance imaging SPRI and that is what I have told you that when we are using a CMOS camera we are basically doing SPRI okay. Otherwise if you think of a single detector Suppose there was a single detector here in you are having a single detector then you needed to move this detector at different uh, theta angles 
to capture the response how in the current day because we are having very sensitive cmos uh, camera systems or um, uh, or um, or the other different types of imaging systems are also available in those cases what we can see is that we can uh, capture the the spectral images at different uh, angles at a single go okay so it increases or it reduces our um, signal acquisition time okay and also the complexity of the hardware of the system so as i told you we can go for this spri to surface plasma resonance imaging and it can improve our measurement time and so on not only this this also helps us in getting a high contrast images of the spectrum okay now as i told you this spr technology it helps us in understanding the association dissociation constant okay since as i told you that we are interested in the interaction between the as uh, between the two um, components say component a and b whether they are associating or dissociating and if we change the environment whether that association will be um what do you call uh, that association can be maintained or there is a change uh, in the association and which may have resulted in the dissociation of the ab complex okay let us take this example so here we have a light source uh, then through the prism it is being incident onto the metal which is the gold um, Uh, layer then we are um, capturing the reflected light as the detector here in we are having uh, we have shown only one channel however there are two channels okay <clears throat> so in the first channel what you will see there will be no antibody which will be included into the system there will be no antibody which will be included into the system now <clears throat> wherein when you measure this spectrum you may get this kind of spectrum so this red line it is basically you are you are getting a 100% transmittance you are getting 100% transmittance and then sub, uh, suddenly at a particular angle you are having a very high absorbance and after that you are again getting a very high reflectance okay in the second case when you have introduced this antibody into the system so this antibody they are specific to this antigens and they will come and they will bind with this antigens and when this happens there is a change in the local refractive index over this metal sheets and due to that reason the surface plasmon will change and the absorption if you see it has shifted to another angle and this shift as i had already told you it will be dependent on the concentration in this case the concentration of the antibody okay now if you want to understand the kinetics so what you are having you will be having a time scale then you are having this resonance units initially when the antibodies are not being injected into the system you will be getting a very high reflectance so you will be getting a constant line as soon as you have started introducing the antibody into the system suppose you have introduced the antibody at this position slowly the antibodies they will come and they will start conjugating with the antigen and during that process there will be an increase in the absorption process 
and the absorption will reach a maxima after particular time that means all these antigens they have been occupied when you have reached this uh, plateau phase that means we have achieved saturation and when there is a saturation after that if you want to wash it out then you give normal saline or uh, this uh, sorry this washing buffer you need to give washing buffer and when you give the washing buffer this antibodies they start to come off from this antigen sites and they are being washed off and this process where these antigen sites are being completely recovered that process is called the regeneration of the sensor are you getting my point now after this plateau is fail then we have antibody dissociating from the antigen because we are flushing the system using the washing water a typical this sensor chip spr chip it can be used for 25 to 30 times okay but just by regenerating the system okay this is again what it is has been shown over here you are having the gold surface over this gold surface carboxymethylated dextrin or carboxylated dextrin they can be immobilized and then we can have the ligand which will be immobilized over here and then we allow the analyte to pass through and if there is a affinity uh, for the ligand by these analytes then they will come and attach on to the ligand surface okay and after uh, the thing is uh, after your analysis is completed you can again uh, flush the system with the washing buffer so these sites will be regenerated okay so if basically microfluidic channels so now again whatever i told you it has been shown over here in this case if you see at this position either the antigen or the antibody they are available freely then when you have the counter antigen or, or whatever so um, uh, so the ligand or the analyte whatever you want to analyze uh, when there is an association slowly the association is starting and slowly see these uh, analyte they are being uh, trying to bind and there is an increase and when you reach the plateau phase if you see all the ligand surfaces they have been blocked okay then we go for the washing and this washing it may lead to a uh, dissociation washing buffer in many cases the washing buffer uh, apart from the washing buffer we may use the regeneration solution if the uh, association between the um, uh, ligand and the analyte they are very strong then in that case we may need the help of the regeneration solution to regenerate the uh, uh, this um, what do you call the sensor chip surface okay otherwise if you give a washing buffer it, if it is a normal antigen antibody in the response and so on they can they may be washed off okay however it uh, all depends on the strength of the antigen antibody interactions okay <clears throat> now there can be 
two types of uh, interactions. The over here, if you see, first we are having the normal resonance. Then initially antigen it binds uh, antibody it binds to the antigen, so we are having the antigen. Then this antibody, these are the primary analytes. It will bind uh, to the metal surface or uh, to this uh, antigen. Sorry, this analytes it will bind to the this thing. And again, if you see, if you want to analyze secondary analyte, so which can interact with this antibodies, okay, so that can also be found out. In this case, what would happen is that since the receptor. So, or the secondary analytes in this case, secondary analytes, they are having lower concentration. You will be getting two types of uh, bands. One would be lighter, and the other would be the darker one. Okay. So, in this case, if you see, if you compare with the previous one, <coughs> this. Um, Mm, your antibody it was say if it is it was at theta 1 in the second case if you see that primary band it is present at theta 1 but after the second uh, stuff this darker band it has moved to theta 2 however as i told you as the receptors or the secondary analytes they are lower in number so um, uh, you will not be getting a complete mask king of the absorption at the theta 1 position. There will be a light band. However, the second band it will be showing because the overall refractive index where this receptor would bind it is higher in number. So they will be it will be more darker at the theta 2 position. Okay. So receptor binding uh, to the antibody that means the secondary analyte when it is binding to the already conjugated uh, system antigen and ant antibody conjugated system you will be getting a secondary response okay so in the case of spri system what you do you have this cmos chip you make this gold chip incident with the polarized light and then whatever the reflections are there you capture it using this CMOS chip and you will be getting the uh, information okay and this can help you in understanding where the interaction has taken place if you see over here there are two kinds of interactions which are uh, taking place in this case there is no interaction and the, in the other case there is an interaction so basically if you see in some of the spots you are having light reflections in some of the spots you are having darker reflections so from there you will be able to analyze at which locations there has been a strong interaction and in which locations there has not been a strong interaction or there has been a weak interaction or maybe uh, there are no interactions at all over there okay <clears throat> then uh, this imaging techniques it can be conjugated with other uh, sensing techniques say for example impedance sensing uh, so you can have this impedance analyzer so what is impedance it is basically the resistance but when you use ac current okay so in layman's term it is the resistance when we are using ac current so <clears throat> we can make this kind of electrode systems over here which may be implanted over the uh, this um, gold surface so the gold surface may be basically patterned in this way and then we can uh, through this two terminals we can apply ac currents a small ac current and they can help you to understand the proliferation of the cells because when the number of the cells will increase the impedance of the system will also increase and at the same time the SPR imaging they will allow you to 
analyze the presence of the cells at different locations okay so in this way we can go uh, we can use a conjugated system in analyzing the uh, cell proliferation uh, pro uh, proliferation in a way in this case as i told you 800 nanometer um, light the ir light it has been used so with this we complete the chapter if you have any questions we can discuss